So as we were explaining, you are having a normal allele and a mutated allele. The mutated allele will produce a less efficient enzyme or a non-functional enzyme or no enzyme at all. What will happen if it is a non-functional enzyme or a less efficient enzyme or no enzyme at all? That gene will become recessive and the normal gene or the wild gene will become dominant. So the wild gene becomes dominant over the mutated gene which becomes recessive and that explains the concept of dominance. So that's the concept of dominance. And then, sir, you have the concept of multiple allelism. Now, what is multiple allele? Dhyan se sunna all of you all. When more than two alternative forms of allele of a gene in a population occupy the same locus of the chromosome or a homologue, they are known as multiple alleles. Normally, we have two genes for a characteristic in a diploid cell. So, samjho, for blood group, you have I capital A, I capital B, then these are two alleles. But do you remember that in case of blood group, we have three alleles, I capital A, I capital B, and small i. And out of these three alleles, any two alleles are there on the two homologous chromosomes of diploid cells, so there is two ki jagat three types of alleles hai, then what is that concept called as multiple allelism that is more than two alternative forms of alleles are occupying the same position or locus of a chromosome or a homologous chromosome are called as multiple allelism. So I capital A, I capital B, small i, these three are collectively called as multiple alleles and so do we remember it will produce six different types of genotypes and four different types of phenotypes. So this is a beautiful example of multiple allelism. Another nice example of multiple allelism is in Drosophila where a large number of multiple alleles are known and one of them is the series of wing abnormality ranging in size from normal wings to no wings at all. In case of Drosophila, we are having for wing pattern different types of alleles which are known as multiple alleles. So which are these? For normal wings, which are also called as wild type. Wild type of normal wing is represented by genotype BG+. Then we have Nipped wing, which are by genotype VGNR. Notched wing, which is VGNO. Strap wing, which is VGST. And vestigial wing, which is VG. So, how many genotypes are possible? 5. VG plus is for normal wing. VGNI is for nipped wing. VGNO is for notched wing. VGFC is for strap wing and VG is for vestigial wing. Now, what will happen is this term. Multiple alleles arise by mutations of the wild type of gene. So the normal wing, VG plus, is the wild type or usi ke mutation se ye char alag type ke multiple alleles bante hai. So instead of one, we are having five different types of alleles VG plus, VGNI, VGNO, VGST, VG. And so these are five different types of multiple alleles all produced by a mutation of the wild type of the gene. And wild type is dominant over all the mutant alleles. So sir, VG plus becomes dominant over all the other types of alleles. So suppose we have VG plus and we have VG. VG plus is for normal wing, VG is for vestigial wing, then VG plus samjo is there with VG, VG plus we remember is the wild type, wild type becomes dominant over the other type, so VG plus will become dominant over VG and you will get drosophila with normal wings. So 
So this is the thermal wave. But suppose we have Vg plus 3. You have Vg Ni, Vg Ni. Now this will produce wings with nick in it. So these become nick wings. So this is Vg Ni with nick, Vg Ni with nick. So these are nick wings. Sometimes we have Vg NO, Vg NO. Then NO stands for notch wing. So these are notches which are there and this becomes VG NO VG NO which shows notch wings. Or we have VG SC VG SC then we have strap wings. So this becomes straps and are called as strap wings. This becomes strap and are called as strap wings. And so we have VG, VG, then that becomes the no wings at all, which is called as vestigial wings. VG is for vestigial wings. So we have VG plus over any other VG ho or VG NO ho or VG NI ho or VG STO or VG ho, any ho. The normal allele or wild gene will become dominant over the others and that will produce normal wing but VG, NI, NI will produce notch wing, NO, NO will produce, uh, sorry, NI, NI will produce nicked wing, NO, NO will produce notch wing, ST, ST will produce strap wing, VG, VG will produce vestigial wing. So these are multiple alleles. And in between them, there are dominant recessive relations as we just seen over here or it may show co-dominance or incomplete dominance. So you may have co-dominance or incomplete dominance. Sometimes we have VG NI and VG NO. Then one wing will be nick and one wing will be notch. So what is happening, both genes are expressing independently of each other to produce neck wing also and notch wing also. So what is this a beautiful example of incomplete, sorry, codon. So this becomes an example of codon. Or you may have VG NI and VG SC. Then we may have neck and along with neck. We are having SC which stands for strap so it will show neck also and it will show strap also. So this is a beautiful example of co-dominance that is found along with the concept of multiple allelism. So this was the concept of multiple allelism. So once again instead of two alleles if there are three alleles as the case of blood groups or there are five alleles as in case of wing pattern of prosopilla then what is that an example of multiple alleles and then we have pleiotropy what is pleiotropy? when a single gene controls two or more different traits then that is called as a pleiotropic gene and this phenomenon is called as pleiotropy or pleiotropism this is exactly ulta of multiple allelism. Multiple allelism means one trait is controlled by multiple alleles. Blood grouping is controlled by I capital A, I capital B, small i. So a trait ke liye multiple alleles hai, it is called multiple allelism. But now uska exactly ulta, one allele is controlling multiple traits. One allele is controlling multiple traits, then that is called as pleiotropism. So, when multiple genotypes control one phenotype, that is called as multiple allelism. But when one genotype controls multiple phenotypes, then that is called as pleiotropism. A K allele se, alag alag phenotypic traits 
बनते हैं दैट इज कॉल्ड एज मल्टीपल प्लियोट्रोपिज सो वट एक्टली इज प्लियोट्रोपिज लेट सी दैट इज प्लियोट्रोपिज यू हैव अ ब्यूटिफुल एग्जाम्पल सिकल सेल अनिमियम सिकल सेल अनिमियम इज अ डिजीज in which you will have rbcs of the person becoming sickle shape and that is called sickle cell anemia and which is caused by a defective gene called hdf so s stands for sickle cell anemia of hd that is hemoglobin so hemoglobin ka mutated gene hai which is called as hbs and normal or healthy gene also called as yg hba is dominant to yg kaun sa hai hba sickle cell gene kaun sa hai hbs and hba which is normal of yg we remember yg is always dominant over the mutated recessive gene so hba is dominant over hbs so suppose you have a person whose genotype is hba hbs HBA HBS HBA becomes dominant over HBS HBA becomes dominant over HBS so the person will not become sickle cell anemia because he is having normal YG HBA becoming dominant over HBS but this person is carrying the gene for sickle cell anemia so this person is called as a sickle cell carrier and we have a sickle cell carrier HBA HBS another sickle cell carrier hba hbs what will happen if two sickle cell carriers heterozygous for sickle cell anemia they are carriers in other words they are heterozygous for sickle cell anemia if they marry each other so what will happen from hba hbs the gametes produced will be hba and hbs from hba hba the gamete produced will be hba hbs and hba with another hba will form hba hba that will become a normal person hba with hbs will form hba hbs that will become a sickle cell carrier hbs with hba will again form hba hbs will become a sickle cell carrier but hbs with another hbs will form hbs hbs which will be a sickle cell anemic person and please remember any child with hbs hbs sickle cell anemia the child will die so if the child dies what will be the phenotypic ratio a normal phenotypic ratio would have been 1 is to 2 is to 1 But because the child is dying, it is not one is to two is to one, but it is two is to one. So instead of a ratio one is to two is to one, we get a ratio two is to one, and two is to one is a phenotypic or a genotypic trait of pleiotropism. So what will happen to a sickle cell carrier? the carriers who are heterozygous hba hbs show signs of mild anemia as their rbcs are become sickle shape or half moon shape in oxygen deficiency so if the person is having hba hbs this is what will happen hba will produce normal biconcave rbc and hbs will produce sickle shape rbc This is HBA HBA. A normal person like you and me, we will have normal biconcave this shape RBC, and this is a carrier HBA HBS, which produces some normal RBC and some sickle shape RBC. Now, if they are carrying sickle shape RBC, the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin. in these sickle cell rbcs is less which means they will have symptoms of anemia oxygen deficiency and that is the reason the disease is called as sickle cell anemia to unke andar oxygen deficiency hogi 
breathlessness hoga if they run they will feel breathless if they climb stairs they will feel breathless so sir this is sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia which is a carrier state in the heterozygous condition they will survive ha if it is homozygous that means it will be hb s hb s then all the rbcs will become sickle shape and that means the child cannot survive the child will die and in that condition it is called as the lethal gene a gene which causes death of the bearer is called as lethal gene so hbs hbs produces all rbcs which are sickle shape and that is the reason the child may die and such a gene is called as a lethal gene so hbs is a lethal gene and what will happen sir to a person who is a carrier a uh, carrier state may the person will not die the person will survive and will suffer from sickle cell anemia he will have oxygen deficiency breathlessness as i just told you so sir it is one question ki sickle cell anemia hai kahan par you will find sickle cell anemia very common in africa africa mein sickle cell anemia bahut common hai why do we have sickle cell anemia in africa suna hai by law of evolution anything which is bad for survival of the species that gene should get eliminated and a good gene or a normal gene should persist in the species so why should people in africa suffer from sickle cell anemia one beautiful advantage of having sickle cell anemia is that it offers resistance against malaria in africa malaria is very common and i'm sure we all have heard of it malaria is caused by plasmodium the protozoa now when a mosquito bites the human plasmodium enters into your rbc multiplies inside the rbc it causes the rbc to rupture and then it infects new rbc causes it to rupture infects new rbc causes them to rupture and that is the way plasmodium multiplies what beautiful advantage of having sickle shape rbc is that sickle shape rbc is the immune to plasmodium plasmodium sickle cell rbc के अंदर मल्टीप्लाई नहीं हो सकते हैं सो एनी वन हु इज हैविंग सिकल सेल कैरियर स्टेट दैट इज अ सिकल सेल एनीमिक इन हेट्रोसाइटिस कंडीशन कैरियर ही और शी बिकम इम्यून टू मलेरिया एंड दैट इज द रीजन इट इज वेरी कॉमनली फाउंड इन अफ्रीका क्योंकि वहां मलेरिया बहुत कॉमन है तो नेचर डिसाइडेड लेट अस सेव दिस पुअर ब्लैक अफ्रीकन बाय गिविंग देम सिकल सेल कैरियर स्टेट they can survive with mild anemia but they will become resistant to malaria so going back to the definition what is one single gene hbs do hbs with another hbs causes sickle cell anemia and death hbs with another hbs causes death with hbs with hba so sickle cell carrier state where have symptoms of white mild anemia and also offer resistance against malaria to ek hi gene hai hbs usne teen phenotypic traits bana three phenotypic traits hbs with another hbs causes death hbs with hba causes sickle cell carrier state and causes mild anemia and sickle cell carrier state with mild anemia has resistance against malaria so death bhi ho sakta hai mild anemia bhi ho sakta hai and resistance against malaria bhi ho sakta hai to ek hi gene ne 
तीन अलग अलग पीरोटैपिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक डेट बनाया माइल्ड अनिमिया बनाया रेजिस्टेंस अगेंस्ट मलेरिया किया एंड दट इज रीजन एच पी एस इज कॉल्ड एज अरोट्रोपिक जीन वन जीन कंट्रोलिंग मल्टीपल पीरोटैपिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक वॉट इज दैट अटूडेबल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ पीओट्रोपिस नाउ बिफोर वी एंड इन इंडिया सिकल सेल अनिमिया इज नॉट वेरी कॉमन But very common is a similar disease called as thalassemia. And in thalassemia, there is a defective gene which we can say is HBT. So you have HBA, HBT, HBA, HBT. These are two thalassemic people in which HBA becomes normal and dominant. HBT becomes uh, recessive for thalassemia, and that means HBA, HBT, HBA, HBT are two carriers of thalassemia. In a thalassemia minor case, and this is very common in India. You go to Gujarat, you go to Rajasthan, you go to Maharashtra. You have many people who are thalassemic minors. So they are carriers of thalassemia, and what is the little danger here? So the danger is if one thalassemia carrier marries another thalassemia carrier, then thalassemia minor marries thalassemia minor, you will have HBA HBA becoming normal, but HBT HBT and third HBA HBT will become. Again, thalassemic minor HBA HBT will become thalassemic minor, but HBT with another HBT will form HBT HBT. That is now thalassemia major, and thalassemia major means the child will die. So India may be here, pure trophism का problem है. You having the thalassemia gene, it can produce a My type of anemia in the heterozygous case or in the homozygous condition, HBT HBT causes thalassemia major and death of the animal or death of that human being. And sir, so an arranged marriage between two heterozygous is discouraged to avoid birth of children with fatal sickle cell anemia. Or in India. Two thalassemic minors should not marry each other, otherwise they can have a thalassemia major child and die of thalassemia. So marriages are no longer made in heaven. Marriages are made in pathology departments. You decide whether you are having two thalassemic minors, and if they are minors, carriers of thalassemia. Don't allow them to marry, otherwise they will develop thalassemia major child, and that child may die. So beautiful example, thalassemia and sickle cell anemia. What do they represent? A condition called as pyotropism. So fine, we have analyzed this here. Uh, we ended today over here. All of you, please study this part well. Any doubts? Please ask me on the Zoom session, and we will. Have all your doubts cleared? Please be prepared for this topic, and you will have a viva next week. All of you, a DCD. I'm sorry, a classroom DCD, and uh, you will solve the DCD, and we will start with the next topic. So please read this part carefully. Any doubts, feel free to either ask me on Zoom session or give me a, a WhatsApp message or give me a call, and we will solve those doubts. Okay? Thank you. God bless. You.